Hello, Barmy Badgerami. Hey, Badgerami. Welcome to today's show. Don't hey, forget your mask. Don't forget your mask. Hope everyone's okay and having a great time whatever you're getting up to. Now, after Nick's Batista story time the other week, I thought it'd be fun to tell you a little bit about the time when I met a popular wrestler from the 90s, WCW stable NWO, and of course, one of Hogan's family, Horace Hogan. Which, oh, they actually are related. Are they? I'm not too sure. But in, definitely in the storyline they were. And I'm pretty sure he still uses that stage name now. So they must be at least related in some sort of way. Perhaps cousins or nephews or something along the line. They are related in some blood fashion. Hopefully, maybe. Anyway, so when I used to watch WCW in the 90s and early 2000s, there was a great stable called the NWO, which was a fantastic stable with Hogan, Je you know, Jeff Jarrett was in it sometimes. You had, of course, uh, Kevin Nash, and of course you had... It was like small N, giant capital W, small O. And of course, yes, you had lots of different characters. Of course, you had Razor Ramon, or as he's modernly called, and lots of different characters that were in it and that were really quite fun to have in the show and it was really cool to watch all the bad guys and of course you know <laughs> Horace Hogan was in that stable for a certain period of time now let's get on to the story which was really fun um, I took my niece to see uh, this Horace Hogan at Barking of all places which was really fun I really enjoyed going and of course, wrestling's big in barking. Wrestling's big in barking. I was going to say, now, I think for a, a certain period of time, it was really big in barking. And then, obviously, it's moved into different local areas in Essex, like Harold Hill and things like that, and Hornchurch, places like that. Anywhere with a massive, great big hall that can uh, accommodate a decent audience, I think, which is really fun and uh, really enjoyable to watch. So we were at uh, Barking Town Hall, and we were watching it. Now... Obviously, we got there quite early. We're all decked out in our wrestling t-shirts. I think I had my American Badass t-shirts on. And I think I even gave one to my niece to wear, which was quite That's fun. That's so 90s. I know, it's so 90s. You know, we, uh, I gave one of my t-shirts to my niece to wear, which was quite cute at the time. And T-shirts with American Badass on are very 90s. Yes. Of course, um, you know, he, Undertaker at the time, had... You know, very 90s, early 2000s band uh, supporting him. I think when he first came in as the badass, he had uh, Limp Biscuit, And uh, as we went along pretty further on with that, I think he had uh, Kid Rock. So they were Kid very... Rock actually has a song called American Badass. Hence, you know, and I think he even came out to WrestleMania on that song. But anyway, we digress. Let's get back to the story. So what happens is we're in the hallway and obviously I was a bit starstruck at the time. I didn't really know what was going on. And uh, I had a quick chat with Horace Hogan before the match and everything. And uh, it was really hilarious because I was like, what, what, this is Horace, wow. So he basically picked us and we sort of had a little chat with him and it was hilarious. And he said to me, I can't chat, I can't chat. Obviously I forced him to chat because you know, celebrity and all that sort of stuff. But he went, I really can't, I've really got to go. They played a rib on me on the plane on the way. Now, obviously, I don't know if you know much wrestling terminology, but a rib in wrestling terminology is a practical joke, is it not, Nick? Indeed it is. So what they apparently did was they put a load of um, diarrhoea tablets in his uh, orange juice and things like that. So he said to me, I've really got to go to the toilet. They spiked my drink with, uh, like, diarrhoea stuff, and I've really got to go. So, <laughs> he was in the toilet for, like, 20 minutes before his match. And I think he did come out a bit later as well. Not because of, like, he was being a diva or anything like that, but perhaps because he had diarrhoea, severe diarrhoea in the toilet. <laughs> Blimey. Blimey. That, he must have lost a lot of water weight water weight and of course being able the the fact that he had to get on the plane and things like that he was probably really 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 dehydrated i wonder if he can even get diarrhea pills now 
I don't know. I don't think so. But they're he, probably not called that. Yeah, they're probably not called that. But yeah, he really needed the toilet. They they. Oh, spoke. I know what they're for. They're, they're to stop constipation, aren't they? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah. So basically, they spiked his drink with this, you know, anti-constipation pill, and he was in there for ages, and it was so hilarious because I was starstruck seeing a wrestler from WCW, NWO, nineties. You know, one of my favourites at the time. And of course, uh, you know, interacting with Hogan and stuff like that. And it was, of course, Hollywood Hogan at the time, so it was even cooler. Quite possibly wrestling's most famous heel turn ever. Most definitely, yeah, definitely. And we could do a story and our reaction on that another time. And, uh, yeah, the reaction to the crowd was really hot. It was really cool. And, of course, I was chuckling to myself throughout the whole thing because I knew that he had near enough cacked himself in a toilet in Barking Town Centre. <laughs> Fantastic. So... <laughs> and all these years on, still, ra still raises a smile. Still raises a smile, and this must have been early 2000s now. Yeah, it must have really been yeah, really be. early. Yeah, really early 2000s WCW. And we even had a really interesting chat on, I was like, are you going to come back to wrestling? What's going to happen with your contract? All that sort of thing. Because it was near the time when WWE were going to buy them out and things like that. So we had a good old, really, we had a bit of a jokey chat, but we had an interesting chat as well. And um, I'm not too sure if he's still an active wrestler, but I know he has tried out for lots of different things like WWE, AEW, things like that. I'm not too sure what he's doing now. So if you've got any information on where Horace is, or if you are in fact Horace and watching this video, Please comment and tell us a little bit about this. And if you remember this story, let me know. And were you at that match in Barking? Because I don't remember who he fought against. It must have been local talent, which was unusual because usually they match up the, the famous wrestler with another famous wrestler. So it was unusual at the time that he was fighting a local talent. But I remember not knowing the name. And I remember it not being from ECW, WCW, WWE at all. So it was definitely like a local talent. And of course he got the win. And it was really interesting because he was wearing like a stone cold style neck, uh, sort of like a knee brace. So it was interesting. I don't know if that was for fashion or if he did have a serious injury at the time. I'm not sure. But let me know if you were there at Barking. Just not a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, just sort of let me know. Let me know if you know anything about this story. Were you there at the time as well? Or if you are Horace or another wrestler watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you really enjoyed this story. And uh, it was really fun to tell you about this, guys. More silly, fun celebrity stories soon. So we've got another one that's going to be fun lined up as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And bye for now, guys. Ta-ra!